Welcome back to another election prediction. Today, using demography to predict the results in such a way that you can really see what group is going to vote in what way and what corollary factors play into this whole thing in the first place. And I'll see you right there. So today, folks, I can present to you the new 538 website uh, predictor and slider. This whole module actually lets you simulate how different states will vote down to the individual vote, even to the millionth. Uh, to really get accurate results as to what's going to happen. And so we can reset these results back to 2020, where Joe Biden, obviously, officially at least, won the popular vote by about 4.5 percentage points and did better with all sorts of different demographics, uh, but in particular, the white vote. Now, that's somewhat ironic given the fact that Trump, although being orange, is known for being uh, more racist. But let's actually break down what happened. So as we know, the backbone to any election is what groups are really in for their own tribe. And so when it comes to voting, this is all the same. And so when you look at, for instance, young voters, they tend to vote Democrat. We're talking about diverse people also voting pretty Democrat with exceptions, of course. And so we're going to blend in that nuance, too. Now, let's get started with the results as we have them from four years ago. As you can see, Biden is winning based off the 2020 turnout. Obviously, the results are pretty much the same and we can even get uh, margins. You can see the density of how much of a win it is predicated on that. We have exact percentages right here, too. Now, to take it a step further, folks, we have some data um, partially from Harvard, partially from Pew, partially from Gallup or, or all sorts of different places where we can really predict with what margin we can actually slide these things through. And so we have independent vote, Democrat, Republican. We have turnout, everything. Uh, we're going to ease off on the turnout because we're talking more in theory. And this is all data as of today. OK, so as of mid-June, what can we predict? And we'll see what happens. OK, so first and foremost, in my notes, I have 18 to 29. That vote is really interesting because we do have this TikTok craze. But even beyond that, obviously, I sound old, but I'm 21. OK, so in that early cohort, of course, we do have TikTok and you could call it propaganda. I can call it sympathetic uh, views towards uh, the Gazans or whatever have you. The point is, is that the left, uh, that usual traditional and by traditional, I mean the far left, these youth people are just completely out to pasture when it comes to actually voting Democrat. They are uh, not identifying as Democrat as before. This is also evident in young black people, but also the people that watch TikTok are seeing what's happening in Israel and feel a certain way. And you can see that in protest. I have, I've had to witness these. And I think that's really interesting in one way. And one of these is being that obviously they're going to vote liberal, but not to the extent of last time. And so while they will still vote Democrat, they will actually, according to polls, go less than what is usual. And so you see Democrats winning the youth vote by about 29%. But in realism, uh, realistic terms, Trump is actually going to gain 10. Now, that's still negative 19, but it does certainly help. And now, if you watch to your right of the screen, you can see how he's already flipping uh, Georgia, Arizona, and we can keep going. This goes all the way down to 19. See that Trump is already winning the election with this difference in the vote. That's a 10% difference. Again, he's still losing by a lot with young people. But making up that difference is also very key. And so that's indicative of a big change. Now, when it comes to a lot of other voters, uh, there's a lot more nebulous terms like college educated, non-educated, the working class, but I will give you as much facts as possible. Now, with the Hispanic vote, there's different articles about this and the literature about it is really indicative of a pro-Trump swing. There are certain polls that are really hard to find, but of the few that you can find, folks, you'll notice that Donald Trump is outperforming last expectations by a whole lot. Now, to refer to the last election, you'll notice that uh, Trump is really he did better in 2020 with Latinos than he did in 2016. That being said, uh, he still lost them by negative 37. OK, and so that's interesting. Now, to be fair, there's some addendums to be made here. So chief among them being that Hispanics that are of third generation or older. Uh, are really mostly Republican, for one. Two, the Texans that lived in the valley on the border of Texas itself went Republican outright. Now, that's a remarkable thing because that is not really what happens unless it's like a state-level election like Georgia Bush, uh, maybe in the 90s. But point being is that that's really uncommon. And even beyond that, of course, Floridians, Cubans, also very Republican. Venezuelan refugees, those also tend to be more Republican than otherwise. Uh, so these niches are going to become fixtures of the Republican Party going forward in this new coalition. That being said, what is the marginal difference? So again, negative 37 for Donald Trump in 2020. In 2016, it was probably like negative 40. For Romney, it was even worse. And believe it or not, McCain did even worse than Romney, I think. As you can see here, Joe Biden only leads with Hispanic voters by six percentage points. Again, that's horrible. I think a lot of people with pea brains, people with maybe a GED 
and a bag of peanuts to their name will say that, you know what, Biden's still winning by six. And that's not notable. If you were winning by six with everyone, then yeah, of course. But you're supposed to be winning Hispanics by Obama margins. Again, who was the last Democrat to be reelected but Barack Hussein Obama? And guess what? That guy uh, won Hispanics by over 30. And so for this to be the case is horrible for Joe Biden. Now, even as a Mexican Trump supporter, I do personally think that him winning uh, or basically making up that much ground where he's 30 points better off with Hispanics uh, from one election to the other, I personally think that's a pipe dream that's definitely not going to happen. That being said, I will meld in some Democratic point of views to kind of fuse the two truths of one poll that's very pro-Trump and another one that's Democrat. And according to uh, to this one by Newsweek, the poll shows that 2,000 likely Latino voters conducted by a Democratic polling firm uh, called Greenberg Quinlan Rosner shows that Biden beats Trump in a head-to-head -head matchup by about 59 to 39 percent in five key battle battleground states like Arizona, North Carolina, Nevada, Texas, and Pennsylvania. Now, that is still a key uh, demarcation point because, of course, a Democratic poll that's really big, 2,000 Latinos only. Uh, that's a huge sample size and liberally slanted all the more. And so that's a 20 point victory for Biden in that demographic. That being said, again, you contrast this to the 2020 vote and that's a negative 17 point spread. And so while again, he's winning it, it's not by the margins you need to, to win states like Arizona, New Mexico, it might get close there. And so let's look at this vote. So again, prior to the Hispanic vote changing, we have 48% of the popular vote for Trump and 51% of the popular vote for Biden. And Trump narrowly wins the electoral vote as well. Now, what's interesting about this, boys and girls, is that Donald Trump, had he gotten a little bit better votes everywhere, he would have won the 2020 election despite, again, losing the popular vote by three. And so it kind of shows that if Trump's tied in the popular average today or winning by one, that's actually indicative of a victory in the Electoral College, which is what is all, I mean, that's where all the beans are counted, okay? So now going to the Hispanic vote, we're going to slowly make this more Republican, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. We're going to whittle this down. Uh, so Biden was winning it by plus 37. It's going all the way down to the Democratic sample uh, bias poll of negative 17 or positive 17 for Biden. As you can see, the popular vote is almost tied. Trump flips Nevada off of that predicate alone. Uh, now, the Trump uh, more friendly polls have Trump uh, down by six. Again, the other ones are negative 20. You average that out. Trump loses the Hispanic vote by uh, 12. So that would be like if uh, Trump got maybe, let's say Trump got, you know, like 40-ish percent of the popular vote for the Hispanics voting. And then uh, Biden got, you know, 52. Uh, and then, you know, RFK, whoever gets like eight. Uh, so that would be the basic math from my understanding. That being said, of course, uh, you know, things are uh, very, very, very liable to change. So I think this right now is a very nice number. As you can see, the election is still pretty close and could be subject to any variable changes, uh, whatever ballot machines are counting what and you know, you know how that stuff works, boy. So anyway, let's go to the black vote. Now, this one is interesting because the black vote for a while has been a fixture of Democrat politics. Again, Barack Hussein Obama won the black woman vote by about 97 percent, which is, again, dictator margins. That's actually really surprising. I mean, if you were to pay every single American 10 grand to vote for you not even 97% of them would actually vote for you because there's some billionaire that would say F you. And so, I mean, there's, it is an insane, insane idea that he won 97% of the black vote. Nowadays with old Mayo Joe, it's not really going to be the case. Joe Breezy is not really going to get the slime vote in Georgia. He's not going to get the young thug fans to come out in droves for him anymore. And when it really comes down to it, um, he has done nothing to engender the black vote. The compromise uh, selection of Kamala Harris was a farcical choice. And I think most black people can see through that. Uh, she's like, what, a quarter black? So by that logic, I'm double white because I'm a, like half Spaniard. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't even make sense if that, you know, you know what I mean? So anyway, she's not black. Second of all, when it comes to the black vote overall, we do have some studies to really look into this. Um, so there are surveys done recently as of, I think the last month that will show that Biden leads Trump by a wide margin among black voters. Now, this is facetious in a way because he's still doing worse. And again, you need all the support you can if you're Biden and you're underwater and your approval's sub 40 percentile. You really need to get it up there. And so when it comes to that, you need a proverbial Cialis pill because the guy is not making it with these young Africans. Now, when it comes to the black vote, again, the youth are more partisan Republican than are the old black people, which is a little odd because, again, most old white people vote Republican. And so for that to be the inverse with black people is like kind of confusing. But it shows a shift in the narrative, a shift in the culture. In fact, a lot of old black people, let's say you're 80, uh, 80 years old, you lived through Jim Crow, presumably. 
uh, whether that, you know, obviously that the state laws were different, but basically uh, you had visceral uh, legal racism, so to speak. And now that's not really much the case. In fact, it's probably the opposite with affirmative action and the precedent behind that. Uh, but that being said, you know, as time goes on away from slavery, people will viscerally care less. That's just how all history works. I bet you the Fourth uh, of July was also a bigger holiday 80 years ago, and in 80 years from now, it'll be less important too. That's just the way it works, okay? The further you get along in the historical timeline, things in the past are just not as significant. That being said, of course, black voters of the uh, young uh, brand, obviously, are growing up in an age of TikTok and stuff like this. When it comes to a candidate's riz or charisma, that matters all the more with young people. When it comes to a guy who is a slap with 34 felony counts, you can totally say, if you're a young black guy my age and say, like, bro, this is ridiculous, like, okay. And so, if anything, it kind of adds to the meme uh, candidate quality, which I think a, a lot of young people would actually be affable towards, which is to say that, you know what, this guy is persecuted. And you know what? The system isn't fair against Donald. And a lot of black people have this victim complex and a lot of it rightfully so insofar as, uh, you know, that they're targeted by police. And what more of an example do they have in Donald Trump, who, again, does something, I guess, arguably wrong, but also gets the book thrown at him. And I think a lot of black people also see that where they do something kind of bad, but also they get no shred of uh, uh, decency when it comes to, let's say, uh, any sort of leniency or anything. And so I think a lot of young black men can actually identify with Donald Trump. And that would actually accentuate his margin. Now, again, he's not going to win it. But if we read the poll for once, I'm stalling it long enough, you'll notice right here that when it comes to overall black people, it's 77% vote or lean with Biden versus 18 with Trump. Now, that's a horrible margin for anything. Uh, if you're losing it by about 60% or about 59. Uh, truth being told, though, when it comes to this election in particular, in 2020, Trump lost the black vote by 82%, 82%. And so I think Trump is liable to do maybe five points better with black people. I think he got about 13% of the black vote. For him to get the 17 or 18 purported in this poll is completely in line with reality. Because again, a lot of the older black establishment uh, are not, obviously they're, they're aging out of maybe existence, but also just like overall narrative control. They don't really have that. They're seeing a guy in Trump who's uh, not a martyr, but just say like, bro, like, can you chill out on the guy, chill out on the guy. And again, a lot of black people rightfully thought, okay, Obama's cool. He looks like me. And now, I mean, they look on the Oval Office, it's just not the same. And so you can really say that the margin is going to get closer, maybe like this. So that's a five point sway in the black vote. Now, indicative of this uh, nomenclature, you'll notice that the black vote shifting that amount, which is notable, um, is still not really a big difference. Again, all the states that were pro-Trump are still the same way. Also, folks, let's notice that the uh, popular vote is also tied. And so interesting how this works. So without even touching the white vote one iota, which again, white people are over 60% of the electorate last time I checked, um, Trump is basically winning the election hands down. Again, tying the popular vote. Now, granted, shifting all voters. This is important. So to shift all voters to say, well, polls are having Trump about tied in the popular vote, maybe up to a 3% W. We don't know yet. Obviously, we are about five months out from the election. That being said, of course, uh, Joe Biden won the popular vote in 2020 by four to five percent. And so that's about a five point difference. And so what we're going to do is obviously considering that if Trump wins the popular vote, we have to shift all of this to the right by five. And so once you do this, we'll do this. So R plus one, you'll see what will happen. The change right here. One already third three one three three eighteen. You're up three, you're up four, you're up five, and you see the result. Trump with 318 electoral votes, Biden with 51. Sorry, Trump with 318 and 51% of the popular vote, 2% uh, independent, that would be RFK, whatever. Uh, of course, this does not factor in RFK really because I think it is somewhat accurate in that it downplays his significance because uh, on one hand, you could argue whether or not he takes away from Trump or Biden. I think he takes away more from Biden slightly. But even beyond this, his vote share has been crumbling. At, I covered this a couple of weeks ago, I believe, but he went from like uh, having 20 percent of popular vote support to probably like in the single digits. And so he's uh, Ralph Nader tier or maybe a step above that. So not very influential. That being said, of course, we do have Biden with 47 percent of the electoral vote and 220 uh, actual votes uh, to himself. This is a bigger victory than Trump got in uh, 2016, in fact. And so that's a very notable thing for Juan. And the important flips in this case would be Nevada over 2016 and uh, some districts that are uh, diff uh, different, like in Nebraska. I think that's notable too. Uh, beyond this, of course, we do have some indication of uh, 
Asian votes, but not really. Actually, I'm lying because it's really hard to get uh, racial. Uh, I wouldn't say science, but I'm saying racial surveys because it's a touchy subject. And again, I should have free domain because I mean, I'm kind of not playing for either team at this point uh, with my Latino heritage. But anyway, the point being is that that is pretty much an indic indicative uh, result here. When you modulate whatever variables I just put in there, this is the end result. And uh, I could get, get into the white vote. It's really hard to find results on this, though, uh, because I just can't. Uh, now, black and Hispanic people, I kind of can. And again, I'm savvy when searching the stuff. The other stuff, I just can't. But in summary, folks, if I told you that uh, if you were to adjust the 2020 turnout results and you manipulated it for the updated uh, poll uh, contingencies for racial demographics, wouldn't you agree that it'd be pretty similar to what I just showed you? Okay, so a Trump victory, a handed one, not a landslide per se, but totally a vindication. It'd be not dissimilar from 2004, where Bush just did a little bit better all across the board, including actually winning the popular vote. Uh, over 2000. And I think this is exactly what is in line for Donald Trump in this trajectory where Trump does better across the board. Nothing insane, but will flip some states that are small. And beyond this, I think that he will win the popular vote. And if he does so, then I don't know what the complaint will be then. So I'll see you on the next one. Make sure you do like the video before you leave, because if you don't, I'm going to haunt you in your dreams. Kidding. See you in the next one. Adios.